Hey y'all, this is Billy the Permaculture Pimp Daddy. Today we're going to talk about knots, and particularly the ones we use most on the farm. Now folks, by no means is this going to be comprehensive. If you're mountaineering, you're going to have possibly a number of other knots. If you're doing any tree work, you might have knots for ascension and things like that. We're not going to work on any of that. I'm going to show you the ones that I use on... There's not a single day that goes by where I don't use at least one of these knots. So I'm going to show you how to tie them, and I'm also going to show you some of the applications in which we use them. Okay, these knots in some ways and some of these knots are going to take some of the elements that I'm showing you right now, so it makes sense. So number one is a bite, and that is nothing more than taking a piece of rope and making a bite. What you see there is just a bite of rope. That's number one. Number two, you might call it a granny knot, but people in the knot world will call it an overhand. That's what it is and overhand. Or they make a variation of that. If you have two pieces of rope, it's called a double overhand. Same thing, but you know, two ropes. Okay, that'll all make sense here in a little bit. That's number two. Okay, the next knot you're gonna see is a half hitch. This is number three. And it's all gonna make sense in the future. You're gonna use this one a lot to help secure other knots. This little development you see right here is a half hitch. Sorry about the pigs in the background, we're in the barn. Okay, I'm gonna make another half hitch. So you kinda of get the point. Then I'm gonna make another half hitch. These are a series of half hitches and we use it for any number of things to try and secure other things. It's gonna make sense here on the next knot. Okay, that's number three. Okay, so number four is the bowlin and it's an anchoring knot. So you take your running end, go around your, your post, and then you're going to take your standing end, make a loop with your running end on top of the standing end. Take your running end, go underneath and through the loop, around your standing end, and then back over the top through your loop again. And then take your standing end and your running end and pull tight. And then with what's left over, you're just going to make an overhand like that all right number five um round turn with two half hitches if you've watched any videos here with me doing anything with rigging you've probably seen that knot it's one of the handiest out there one of the least well known okay here's my rope my running end my standing end here's my anchor point it's kind of like the bowline except the bowline can slide up and down what if i need it to stay still Okay, well, here's one way to do that. I'm going to wrap it around my structure once, and I'm going to do it twice. Okay? There's your round turn. It's going around twice. Now, just like I showed you a little bit ago where I said some of these knots build on each other, this is the classic example of it. Okay, so we got our round turn. Now we're going to take this running end right here, and we're going to make half hitches down the standing end with it. So I'm just going to go through... Now, we'll give you a fair bit of warning. Okay, there's one half hitch, right? Now, when I showed you the demonstration of the half hitch before, they were spread out quite a bit. Now, in electric work, there's a reason for that. We do it that way for a reason. In this case, I'm going to bring it up kind of close. Now, the next half hitch I'm going to put in is going to be just below it. That's a round turn with two half hitches on. Now, make sure that you have one half hitch going one way and one going the other way. Because if you don't, you have, if you do it where your half hitches are going the same direction, where they're both coming out the same hole, you wind up with what's called a girth hitch. That is a girth hitch. So that's a round turn with a girth hitch, but we're looking for a round turn with two half hitches. Now I'm going to show you a variation on this real quick, and I use it all the time. Remember, this is in an area where when this thing is under tension, it's going to stay put. It's not anywhere near as secure as one of the knots I'm going to show you in a minute. But it generally stays where it needs to be, and that's exactly what I want. But there are times where this thing is under tension, and you may need to get it off quickly. So in which case, when it's under tension, those half hitches can be a little bit of a bear to get out. So I'm going to do it all over again, but this time I'm going to make a slight deviation. And it's once again using what we've learned already. Okay, so this is my round turn. Here's my running end. 
I'm going to go through, instead of doing a half hitch, I'm doing a half hitch, but I'm going to use a bite. Okay, and that bite is just like that. I'm going to make it a quick release. This is going to be a round turn with two quick releases. Okay, so remember that bite. This is nothing more than a bite. So instead of a half hitch, I'm going to pull this bite through here. And then I'm going to double this bite. I'm going to get a little bit more on that. Now, my next half hitch, which is a half hitch combined with a bite, is going to be the same way. I'm going to use both ropes. Come up through there like so. Okay. We'll dress that up a little bit. Ideally, it would be... It would be, um, I'd have a little bit more on this, a lot more actually. But you can see through this demonstration. So now this thing, no matter how hard I pull, it's going to do everything a round turn with two half inches would do. The only difference is if I need to get it done quickly, and sometimes I do, a lot of times I do, all I need to do is pull this one and then pull this one. And then I can take the whole thing off. It's nothing to get it off, you see? So there you go, round turn with two half inches. Master that before you start trying to put a round turn with two quick releases. This is probably my most go-to knot on the farm bar none. All right, number six, very well-known knot, but believe it or not, there's a lot of people. I've had apprentices work with me over the years. I'll say, hey, tie a square knot, and then I'll get out there and it, it's not a square knot. I'm gonna show you how to do it right, and I'm gonna show you how to dress it up right. Now, what is a square knot for? We just showed you anchoring knots on here, the bowline and the round turn with two half inches and the round turn with two quick releases. Now, there are times you're gonna to have to join two ropes. It may be the same rope like I'm holding here, or it may be two separate ropes. But now what's critical is that when you use this square knot, it is important that those ropes are of equal diameter. And I'm gonna show you why here in a little bit. Okay, square knot. So I got two ropes, need to connect them. So it's really, over one side, okay? And I've been doing this a long time and even I gotta think about it sometimes. But I'll show you how you know if you got a square knot. That, ladies and gentlemen, is a square knot. If you can do this with it, that's a square knot, okay? Now, just like every other knot, we dress it up. So I'm gonna take these two, I'm gonna put one over the other. There you go, okay? Now I'm gonna do it again in the opposite direction there's my square knot. Now, technically, that's it right there, right? The more I pull, the tighter it's gonna get. Now, just like every other knot of this type, in the old days, we would have said, put a half hitch in it. <laughs> no. So it'd have a half hitch here and a half hitch here. And there's a lot of people I'm sure still do it that way. So it's a square knot with a half hitch. No, always, always, always secure your knot Instead of a half hitch, use an overhand. So here it is, I'll spread it out. I would ordinarily bring this in a lot tighter, but just so you can see what I'm doing, this is why I said some of these knots build on each other. That's why I gave you the basic ones first. So granny knot, granny knot, and there's your square knot. And as I pull, this thing will not slip for the most part. And if it does, you are backed up with these two overhands. All right, number seven. This is not widely known and not widely used, but it is another go-to knot. In fact, it wasn't long ago I had to use it when something was flapping on the truck. It's called a double sheet bend. And what it's designed for is putting two ropes of unequal diameter. I got some orange 550 cord here and I got some regular rope. Let's go ahead and tie a square knot in it so you, I can illustrate exactly what I'm talking about. Okay, remember a square knot is joining two ropes of equal size. So that's a square knot, right? Okay, we'll, we'll even tighten it up a little bit. Now, it's to the point I need to pull, it just comes apart and it turns into a clove hitch to some extent. Actually, it turns into a girth hitch. It does not work, okay? So back in the day, the sailors came up with a way when they'd have a sail flapping in the wind, this is how it was told to me, they would have a sail flapping in the wind while they needed to secure it. And they're out in the middle of the ocean while you're not going to the supply house. So they came up with this knot called the double sheet bend. And it works like this. I got one big rope, one small rope. And the reason this is relevant is that on the homestead, most of us have more time than money. So the notion of having to go out there and go buy a $200 rope ain't going to happen. Sometimes you just need a, another 20 feet. 
and it may be a situation like this where you just need something secure. So you take your larger rope, if that is your situation, I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna do, what's this called again? A bite, I'm gonna take a bite on it and I'm gonna stick my finger right above it, okay? I'm gonna take my smaller rope, come up through the hole over my finger like so and then I'm gonna wrap it. This is why it's called a double sheet band. It can be a triple, it can be a quadruple if you want it. I'm gonna go through here once. Oops, lost it there. Let's try that again. We're gonna go through, we're gonna make it take a bite. Put my finger directly above it, like so. I'm gonna run my rope over the top of my finger and the bite, okay? And then twice, this is why it's called a double sheet band, I'm gonna come through this hole right here. Okay, I'm gonna go once and twice. Doesn't have to be twice. I've done this before. I don't even know if it's a legit knot, but I made a quadruple cheat sheet then where I had to wrap it a few times a, um, instead of a double sheet bend. So we gotta dress that up. We're gonna get this tight and I'm gonna show you what it looks like. Always dress up your knots. Okay, there it is under tension. That's what a double sheet bend looks like. So I can pull as tight as I want. Now, under high, high tension, this is not the knot you wanna be using. But here it is, a double sheet bend, it works. Square knot, it will just slip apart. Double sheet bend, like I said, I can wrap that time. In fact, I'll go ahead and do it. That's twice, I'll hit it three or four times. It doesn't matter, as long as you hit it twice, there's two. And we'll go ahead and do it four times. So we'll call this a quadruple sheet bend. I ain't even sure this is a real knot, but I know one thing, I've had to do it in the past where there were some massive differences between the ropes I was joining and it wouldn't stay together unless I did something like that. So there's a quadruple sheet bend. All right, number eight, the Prusik. And if you watched any of these videos with rigging, you've probably seen the Prusik every single time. In fact, here in a minute, I'll show you in this stall where it's used every single day and how you can use it at the house. But the idea of this Prusik, you've already, so if you'll, you're seeing a pattern here, some of these knots kind of build on one another. The purpose of this Prusik is, it can be used for any number of things. It could be used as an anchor. There's an end of line Prusik, there's a midline Prusik. The way I use it most is when I need to secure something to something else and I need it to not slip when it's under tension. So. Let's show you how to make that. We're gonna just do a regular Prusik, not an end of line or midline Prusik or nothing like that. Okay, so you remember you learned the round turn with two half inches, okay? First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna take our running end. We're just gonna go around this twice, like so, okay? There you go, there's a round turn. Now we're gonna repeat this same thing on this side. I got my running end here. I'm gonna cross over the front and then I'm gonna do the same thing right behind it. Just like so. There's once. That's actually a girth hitch with an extra turn. And with that loop, it just became a Prusik. So there you have it. We'll just dress it up a little bit. And then we'll talk about what this knot does for those of you that don't know. All right, here we are in the stall. Now, this little knot right here with the 550 cord going through it is a Prusik. It's attached to a bucket, clearly. Now, this bucket doesn't have to be a bucket. Pigs are saying hi. It could be their feet. It could be chicken feet. It could be anything. So all I'm going to do is slide this Prusik down. That's the elevation I want, right? I can put it whatever. And the cool, the reason I love this knot so much is that we do this deep bedding method in here. And as the bedding rises, I need to be able to lift that whatever I have in there, whether it's grit, whether it's oyster shell, it needs to raise up too. So, or let's say I got Milk Boy, I'm in here training him. I need to get it completely to a place where he can't get it. So for a little while, while I got him training out here with the chickens, I'll just get it up out of the way. So he doesn't, he can't access it. Then when it's time for, to go back, just take a little pressure off and I can put it to whatever elevation I think is fine. And this thing will hold no problem whatsoever. This is why the Prusik is so awesome for farm operations. Let's move on to the next knot. All right, number nine. Now we've talked about anchoring knots, okay? We've talked about joining knots. We've talked about everything else, but we got to talk about middle of the line knots. So I got an end of the rope, right? I got another end of the rope down there. 
But now what if you need a knot midway in there? Now why would you ever need that? Well, I can think of a number of reasons and I demonstrated it in some of the other videos. It may be a one rope bridge. It may be a gap I want to cross. It may be a trolley system that I want to set up on the farm. There's a bunch of different ways. There's a bunch of different middle of the line knots. It could be as simple as a double overhand. That's a middle of the line knot. It could be a bullet on a bite, which is basically an adaptation of that. And you just kind of dress that up. It could be any number of things, but folks, I'm trying to teach you the simple knots that are easy to do on the farm. I'm going to show you the first one. It has its places. Everybody knows out there that I'm a big fan of the cat's paw, and I'll show you that one in a minute. But this one's called a wireman's knot. And because I'm a wireman, maybe that fits. All I'm going to do is take a bite in my hand, wherever I need that knot to be in the middle of the rope. Okay? So I'm going to go around once, and I'm going to go around. So there's three bites three loops of rope in my hand. This knot is really this simple. Just count. I'm gonna take the center, wherever it is, and I'm gonna move it to the outside. So it's gonna be one, two, three, and on the fourth, you pull it. And there, you wanna dress it up like always. So in this one, this is the middle of the line knot. This is a wireman's knot. So if I needed to go back and forth, I need to make a loop in that rope or I need to tension something down, I can do that. And you know it's right when you can count one, two, three, four bites all in this one rope. Now the only downside of this is, is that if it's under massive tension, it's gonna, need, it's gonna be really tough to get out. So Wireman's Knot, it has its role. You'll probably see me use it in a couple of videos coming up here in a while. But my go-to, if there's a middle of the line knot and it's not under an enormous amount of tension, even if it is, it still works. It's called the cat's paw and you've seen me do it before. I'm just going to put this little snap link here in my pocket. This is number 10. Okay. Middle of the line knot. Here we are. Let's get a clean part. And it's really this simple. Turn it on itself once and do it a second time. And then these two, I'm going to stick them together just like that. Now, the only downside of this knot is it's not just gonna stay in place, which is fine. I can, I always have a snap link somewhere nearby. Stick that in there, I'll dress it up. And now I have all the advantages of let's say the middle of the line wireman's knot, but the benefit to this is, okay, so it's in the middle of the line, it goes back and forth, it does everything I need it to do. You've seen me demonstrate it a number of times already. Now, the cool thing about that knot is, is even if it's under tension, you may have to loosen it a little bit, but I can get it out of this snap link, and here's the cool part about it. No effort. It goes right back to the way it was. This is my go-to middle of the line knot just about every time. But there are times I use the, um, there are times I use the wireman's. There are times, there have been times in the past, I've used even, if I'm in too big a rush, double overhand, depending on what it is. That's sufficient too. Those are your middle of the line knots. Let's move on. This is number 11, and this is gonna be the end of the line for this video. So let's just say you have a rope, and I'm not gonna use that rope because I use it for too many other things. I'm gonna take this cheap rope here that I don't like anyway, okay? And we're gonna simulate something. I'm gonna go ahead and we're gonna pretend as if this rope is pretty darn compromised, okay? but I still need to use it. Uh, you know, that's, that's not cool. Nobody likes a messed up rope like that. I'm gonna show you something. It's a cool knot and it'll get you through a jam, but don't always rely on it. It's called the sheep shank. All of you people that are giving up uh, profanity, you might wanna consider calling somebody a sheep shank in, in, instead of the alternative. You low down dirty sheep shank. Anyway, so this knot is designed to take the pressure off this thing that's just barely, I only meant to nick it but it's barely holding, so we'll see how well it works. Okay, we're gonna make a bite in one hand. Remember what that is, okay? And in the other hand, I'm going to use, remember that we're building knots on one another. Let me get this down closer to where you can see it. We've got a bite in this hand. I'm gonna take this other hand, and remember that half hitch I showed you earlier? I'm gonna take this running end, I'm gonna make a half hitch and stick it over the top of one end. Now, you better be a little bit coordinated here because you want to tighten that up, okay? There's a bite here, and you got a half inch holding it. Now, simultaneously, let me show you that. 
Now, I could, if you have a partner working with you, you can go ahead and tape these together like so. I'm not gonna do it, I'm gonna show you this. Okay, on this other end, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing. There's my frayed part. I'm gonna make a half hitch, and I'm gonna stick it over the top of this loop of my damaged, of my damaged um, rope, okay? Now, how do I know where the damaged one should be? It should be the one, you got a number of, you got a series of things going on here. The area where this knot works, this sheep shank, this series of knots really, the way it works, I'm gonna step on one end to kind of demonstrate it. The area that's compromised, it has to be, It. this is critical, it has to be the one loop that goes through both loops. So if you follow each rope back, you'll look at it, the area that's hitting Follow this one back, it goes through a loop, right? Follow this one back, it goes through a loop. Now, look at any other rope. It goes through a loop on one side, goes at a half inch on the other. You're gonna have to practice this one, I dig it. But I can go ahead, now ideally I'll go ahead and tape these together, but to demonstrate exactly how this thing works, okay? It's under tension, and despite the fact that that thing's barely hanging on there, this rope is still holding together. Okay, I'm gonna go one further. Sounds like a Ginsu knife commercial. But let's just see if it holds up. If I cut it all the way. Hopefully don't cut me in the process. This razor blade Michelle had it, so. Okay, there we are, folks. Under tension, the sheep shank. It's just funny saying that word. Here it is, the sheep shank completely, as long as the tension. You don't obviously want to cut your own rope while you're in the middle of it. That's why I'm using this cheap one here that I didn't like anyway. Didn't never care for you rope. Anyway, here it is completely severed. Now, the second I take the tension off of this thing, it you're done, you know? So sheep shank is really cool when you have a compromised rope. And the only reason, I seldom use it, but the only reason I'm pointing it out there is because I know a number of my fellow permaculture designers, homesteaders and farmers and stuff, you're dealing with ropes that are, you know, that need work, that we just can't afford to go out and buy them. So let's see what happens when we take the tension off, okay? So there it is. We'll just kind of, everything's ghoul. Cool. Oops. There we go, two separate ropes now. And we had one. Sheep shank, remember that one, practice it. Practice them all. So folks, there we are. I think that's 11 knots. Not sure, somewhere around there, 11 knots. And I use them in some capacity every single day of the week, every single day we're out here doing this. So folks, I hope this helps. We'll do a comprehensive, we'll even show you some of what we're asking how we made the Swiss seat. I'm gonna show you some cool stuff in the future on how to do that, how to make a Swiss seat, how to take numerous knots that I've just showed you right now to make something really, really cool out of it, whether it's a one rope bridge, a Swiss seat, any number of things. Every knot I showed you will be used again in a future video, so stay tuned for that. So I hope, hopefully this was of some help to all the people out there that have asked if we could do a comprehensive knot video. There's a ton more I could show you, but not ones necessarily that I use every single day on the farm. Remember, subscribe, tell your friends about us. Until next time, this is Billy, the Permaculture Pimp Daddy, where pimp stands for permaculture is my passion. Because it is. We'll see you next time.